Hi guys. So, okay, so I'm gonna start with a uh, fish, okay? So I printed out a very basic fish. You guys can do any kind of fish you want if you even wanna do a fish. Um, but basically we already have something similar to this shape, their body shape in um, what we already created. So all I would have to do is add a fin, a fin on the bottom, another fin right here, and then their tail fins, okay? Um, so all I'm gonna be using for that is things like cereal boxes. Cereal boxes or Coke bottle or Coke container, um, just anything that you guys can find around your house. Fruit snacks, okay, any cardboard that you guys can find around your house or just regular cardboard. Um, regular cardboard is a little bit thicker. Well, it's quite a bit thicker sometimes, so it's harder to cut, but you can use whatever you guys can find. So if this is my beginning, I would have a fin right here, a fin right here, a fin right here, and then a tail, okay? Or whatever way you decide to do it, okay? Now this does not look just like a fish, okay? And it's okay if it doesn't because we just made a big ball, but we're just making it, it'll be a little more cartoony, but that's okay. So what I'm gonna use is what I have, which is honey bunches of oats. Um, so because the fin looks like this shape, kind of a triangular shape. See that? Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm probably just going to um, use a straight edge. Let's see. And go from one corner to the other because, or not one corner, corner, but almost one corner to the other. Sorry, I thought I had a longer one of these. See how long that one is. That's close enough. Okay, so I'm gonna leave, I'm not gonna go to a point. I don't wanna go all the way to a point because this doesn't go all the way to a point. See how there's a little bit of space right there? It's not just a point. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of space. So I'm gonna go from maybe like here to here. All right. Okay, see that? Can you guys see my line? All right, so I'm gonna leave a little bit of space right here so that it's not just a point, like I said. Get there. Just gonna cut it. Because the other thing is this is not perfect because the other one has a little bit of an ink or a curve to it, and I'll show you. But I'm just gonna do it at the same time with these. Now see how this one has just a little bit of a curve right here? So it doesn't go straight like mine does. And you can leave it like this. You guys can see how it looks. You want to leave it like this. Okay, and then you cut out the curve for the actual head. I'm just going to do a little bit of that curve. So I'm going to put these on top of each other so they're at the same angle. And I'm going to just draw a little bit of a curve because it comes down a little bit and then comes out. So I'm just doing the tiniest bit. I just wanted to have a little bit of a curve right there and then it kind of flattens out. So I'll take these two together. You guys can cut, draw them separately or you can just, you know what, let's do it this way. If I cut along this, this new line that I drew that has a little bit of a curve at the end. Okay, just see how that has a, just a little bit of a change? Then I can go put this on here and draw the same curve because it's about the same on the bottom. It's a little different, but close enough. I'm gonna draw it on there, cut that out. Now the thing that's gonna be hard is um, our balloon is round and this is flat. And since the balloon is three-dimensional, I can't trace it. I can't know exactly how far I have to cut this down. All right, so I have to experiment a little bit. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of a curve first to make up for that. And I'll show you guys as I go. I'll make a little bit of a curve off of the bottom. Oops, maybe a bit bigger than that.
Okay, do you guys see how I drew just a little bit of a curve right there? I'm gonna cut it off and see how it works. It's not gonna be just right, but I wanna see how close it is. Because it needs to be able to fit on the balloon <clears throat> or on the pinata. Okay, so that's a little bit better. There's still some room to move. Um, However, on this one, what I'm gonna suggest is that we do little cuts, I'll show you. We're gonna do little cuts. So remember, this is the top with the little thing. This is the bottom, make sure you're doing the cuts on the bottom. I'm just gonna do little cuts like this, kind of like um, for those of you guys who did fringe with me, but don't do them very, do them a little bit further apart. So I'm just gonna do cuts like this. So I'm going like maybe an inch up Okay, you guys can't tell. All right, so what I'm gonna do, because it has to be able to attach to the ball and it's gonna be kinda hard to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it so that these, um, they're gonna go every other way. So this is gonna go this way, this will go this way. See how I'm making go every other way. And some of them I might have to cut deeper and we'll fight, figure that out as we go. Okay, so see how I've done it every other way? That's how it's going to attach to your actual balloon. Okay, now see how it's, it's working in the middle but it's not working on the ends, it's too high. So that's where I know that I need to cut deeper is in the middle where it's, because um, I need these to touch so I need to cut the middle so this can go down further. So I'm gonna cut these just a little bit, just in the middle I'm gonna cut up a little bit more. And I'll bend them to, the, to where I cut them. This is tricky. You might have to close it up again. I have to close it. See, I'm putting them back to normal so that I can cut. It's kind of hard to cut through them when they're bent. All right, let's try. I'm cutting up just a little bit in the middle. So let's try this again. But this time I'm gonna bend it a little bit higher. See how I cut it higher? I bent it higher. Okay, we'll try this. Now this is a tricky way to do this, um, but the thing is, what you need is you need these little tabs to make it stick to your fit, to your pinata. Okay, do you see that? So it's starting to fit a little bit better. So you guys can keep cutting um, wherever you need to cut in order for it to fit. All right, I'm gonna cut just a little bit more because that one still needs to go down a little bit further so that the ends can touch. I know this is kind of a little bit tricky in your brain to understand, but while you're doing it, hopefully it makes a little bit more sense. So I'm gonna bend even a little bit higher, a little bit higher. So what I'm basically doing is I'm making the curve of this in these cuts. See, do you see the curve above there? See how it's a bigger curve than the curve I cut before? I'm just using this to figure out how to do that. Okay, so see how it's like this and now it's starting to fit. Do you guys see that? Okay, um, so from here, and this will be the same that you do for the top and the bottom, um, all you'll do is you'll put this on here. You can use, this tape is good for putting paper mache on top of it because it's kind of like paper. Um, you can use this, this uh, oh my gosh you guys, masking tape or you guys can use duct tape. If it's not sticking, use duct tape. Um, but if you can use this and it's working fine, just use this. So the reason I have the tabs is because that's what I'm gonna tape down. It's kinda hard to show you guys. I'll bring you a little bit closer. Okay, so I'm gonna have the, I'm gonna have this on here figure out where it needs to go, and I'm gonna tape down these tabs. Now this is likely a two-person job, so if you have somebody that's standing around and say, can you hold this for me so I can tape it? Okay, so you're gonna tape it like that. Um, I would use as much tape as you can. Make sure it's really, really secure so that when you go to paper mache it, it doesn't start falling apart on you, because that's the part that's gonna make it, if it's wet and soggy, um, that's when it wants to fall apart, okay? so. 
do tape it down as much as you can. So it's starting to look like a fin. You see that? So for the bottom fin, I would just do the same thing. Um, and then for the back fin, let's pretend that this is now the back fin. Okay. So what I would do is I'd probably just draw that kind of shape. You see it? Draw that shape. Um, I'm going to cut it a little bit longer because we're going to do the same thing with the little tabs. So I'm going to cut that shape out. Okay, got that shape. Now we're going to do the tabs again so that it can ha have something to stick to it. Alright, so I'm doing the tabs again. See that? I would just do the same thing. Look at that, and then I would tape it down that way. Okay, so then you have a fin, fin on top, then you'll do the fin on bottom, you'll have this for the back, um, and then for your side fins, you know, this, is, this isn't perfect, but um, I'm gonna use this one just to show you an example. A side fin would go about like this. Um, I'll cut it a little bit better so it looks more like a side fin. So I'm gonna do it this way, all right? So one thing is, if I do it like this, it's flat. So instead of doing the tabs on this one, we can do this. Sorry, it's kind of tricky to show you guys all this stuff. Now, one thing you can do is you can just, um, it might help to have something strong to hold it, but I'm just gonna basically put this on the end right here, or a ruler, and push it up against it. Or you can just fold it. I mean, it's just harder to fold, it's just tricky to fold it. But basically all you're doing is creating a little fold like this so that when you tape it onto your and this might even have to when you tape it on to your balloon yeah this is going to be kind of hard to bend okay when you tape it onto your balloon you're taping on this part and then this part can stick out do you see what i'm saying okay so that's why you're making all these different tabs so you have to have tabs to be able to stick it actually onto your balloon um, when you're done with actually making this kind of stuff, all you're going to do is you're going to do your paper mache. Um, I'm not going to do it on this one because these are just examples, but you're going to dip your paper mache in and you're going to do it sideways so that you, it's kind of like tape sticking it like this. All right. So you're going to stick it on like this and you're going to do a bunch of paper mache things to cover up everything that you just did. All right. Um, you can cover up the whole fin or you don't have to. If you cover it all the way up, it'll be stronger. If you don't, then it'll just be as strong as this already is. Um, but you do have to cover up the bottom anywhere that attaches to, to the paper mache or to the pinata. Cover that whole thing up with paper mache and let it dry so that it is strong. Got it? All right.